My investigator's license. 20 bucks, a damn questionnaire, and anyone who wants to can stick their nose in your business. I don't see why I should. About 25 bucks. Ten bucks should be more than enough for some information. These might make you change your mind. Money to buy information? That must be one important girl you're looking for. Enough for someone to hire me. You know, lately, a lot of people like you have come by. They ask questions, look for people. Once, this hotel was considered one of the best in Harlem. Now it's become a shelter for criminals, easy women, and people who are running away from something. All it took was a couple of years of recession to turn New York into a cesspool. I wonder where this city's going to end up. Where it always has. Nowhere. Ah, uh, you're always headed somewhere. Good or bad, you always have a direction. The day that New York will be rotten through and through, that will be the day that the good God himself will come down to crush it. Don't count on that. I know people in this city who would manage to bribe your good god with a couple of well-aimed compliments. Sir, I guess you're not a believer. I believe in whiskey, and in all those things that I can explain in a day. Well, without faith, it's impossible to survive in this city. Everyone needs something to believe in. Probably I just don't have anything worth believing in yet. Anyway, let's end this catechism lesson and tell me where I can find the girl. You said her name is Susan Weber? Susan Weber, with two B's. Hmm, Susan Weber. Oh, you gave me money in exchange for information, but who says that I have any? Dannazione, you must have a list with the names of your guests. As I told you earlier, this hotel is a place where half the tenants are poor devils trying to get away from something. They usually don't give their real names. A hundred John Smiths, a dozen George Washingtons, even a couple of Charlie Chaplins pass through this hotel. So there is no room under the name Susan Weber? That's right, son. I'm sorry, but I can't help you. If you want, you can take your money back. Keep it. I'm sure it'll come in handy. It's pointless. I don't even know if Susan Weber is really here. A gate. The cheapest way to keep away the... I don't see why I should. It... I have no intention of leaving without taking a few. That should be Susan's hotel room window. But before doing anything, I should be sure.
It's the camera Greta loaned me. Mine broke months ago. A candy that's better left in its aluminum wrapper. The guy at the hotel says it's really old. The keys of the car, of the office, and of something else that I don't remember anymore. Sitting down and re- Son? I have a question for you. Tell me. It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. Is there a woman called Late among your guests? Late, yes, and she matches your description. White, young, and blonde. Is she the woman you're looking for? Yes. What room is she in? Room 313, third floor, end of the hallway. Thanks. I don't have anything else to ask you. Well, if you need me, I'm here. It overlooks 125th Street. Boxes without anything interesting. There are photographs of black musicians hanging everywhere, probably jazz players. Room 311. A wastebasket full of every kind of junk that can be produced in a hotel. There's a little panel here. can't break open everything. I don't hear anything. It's today's newspaper. The usual news that comes out before the New York mayoral elections. Each candidate smears the others, trying to steal as many votes as possible. At the end, it will be the least immoral one who will win, or the one who'll do the best job in hiding his skeletons in the closet. It looks like the rain from these last few days knocked out the telephone lines. In some areas of the city, the service will be cut off to avoid a short circuit. The usual news that each, at the end, even though companies keep shutting down, the newspapers are saying the worst is behind us. I wonder who it helps if people believe it. I've finally gotten away from my clod of a stepfather. I couldn't take it anymore. He thought I should spend my entire life behind the counter of a butcher shop. I'm an actress. 
I was born to act in movies. Big productions. Isn't that right, Teddy Bear? Of course, baby. I'll make you the biggest star in Hollywood. Yes, Howard. With you, I'll be the next Vivian Lake. Actually, you'll make me even more famous than her. You'll give me her parts and I'll exceed her. I'll be the number one. <laughs> right, Teddy Bear? Right? And here's our Susan. I'll take a few pictures of her with her teddy bear. And tomorrow morning, I'll give them to Harvey Weber. This way, I'll get the rest of my money. I don't see why I should. That should be Susan's hotel room. That, that should be Susan. It's the camera gre mine broke months ago. No clue. At least none that makes any sense. Room 313. It's Susan Weber's room. Susan Weber's room number is 313. I don't see why I should go to the next floor. Son, what else can I do for you? I don't have anything. Where? These are my lockpick. These trinkets have come in handy more than once. Valuable information is often the best hidden one. My cigarettes and my lucky lighter even though it has never brought me much luck. The keys of the car, of the off. From here, I can't see much of what's going on in there. It's closed. I've heard enough. Harvey Weber paid me to get him some proof of his stepdaughter's love affair. All I have to do now is to get a picture of Susan while she's in the arms of her teddy bear, Howard. The apartment should have a window.
It's the thermostat. It's hot as hell in this room. One day it's cold, the next one it's hot. Tomorrow, I'm gonna give an earful to the owner of this crappy room. You don't treat a future movie star this way. Good, that must be our Susan's room. Now I have to find a way to open that gate. I knew that it was a good idea to bring them with me. I can't think of anything. A manhole. It's too high for me to use it. The theater's service entrance. This is probably... Right. Too bad I left my lucky crowbar at home. I can't break open everything. That thing must be ten times my weight. I'll never make it move by myself. I can't think of anything. I can't think of anything. Yes, I'll take one. This bar could be helpful. No clue. At least none that makes any sense. No, it doesn't make any sense. Let's try. I'll take the bar. It doesn't make any sense. Let's try. A manhole. Manhole. I can't think. I definitely can't get there from here. It doesn't make any sense to me. I'll take the bar.
Let's try. It's too hot. It doesn't make any That thing must be 10 times my weight. I'll never make it move by myself. I'll take the ball. I don't see how I could use them together. I don't see how I don't see how I Let's try. A manhole. I can't think of anything. I can't think of any- A dumpster, the kind that has wheels on the bottom so that you can move it. There's a break here. The street is probably downhill a little, so if I unlocked it, the dumpster would roll all the way down to the road. Unlocking the break now won't help me. I have to find a way to place it where I want. I'll take the bar. Let's try. Yes, it could work. Okay. Closed. The door must lead into the theater. Now's the time to earn my 30 bucks. Good. This shot will work just fine. A photo of the stepdaughter necking with the first guy that promises to make her a star. This should be enough for Harvey Weber to get his lawyers involved, and it's definitely enough for me to get out of here. I would need to have a good reason to do it. I open the door and jump into the car, ignoring how the seats are getting soaked with my wet clothes. It's water. It'll dry sooner or later. I put the key in the ignition and start the engine. But something isn't working. The gas gauge is on E. The tank must be empty. Following a lead on a case and forgetting to fill up the tank. It's a rookie's mistake. Or maybe the mistake of someone who's simply starting to get sick of this life.
I'll have to find another way to get out of here. I'd rather walk than get in that chalagi. Son, what else can I do for you? Do you have a telephone? Yeah, we had one. You mean you don't have one anymore? We do have the telephone, but it's just not working. I've been waiting for someone to come and fix it for weeks, but nothing so far. Yeah, the technicians come every three months to make sure that the control panel is working, but after a few weeks, there's no more dial tone. So it's not the first time that it's broken? In the last few years, I've called the technician at least ten times, and every time he asks for more money. If this weren't a hotel, I'd get rid of it tomorrow. Where is the control panel? Oh, I don't have a clue. Must be somewhere outside the building, near the alley entrance. I don't have anything... Really? doesn't make any sense to me. This is no breakdown. The cable was cut, and by the look of it, it definitely wasn't an accident. The only way to make the telephone work again is to reattach the wire. Yes, the candy wrapper should hold it together. Let's hope it works. Son, what else can I do for you? Your telephone should be working now. Do they also teach you how to repair telephones in your private detective training? No, just to find out when someone's trying to rip you off, I suggest you call another technician next time. And if you could call me a cab now, I'd be very grateful. Of course, son. A night spent under the rain makes even this grubby old cab seem welcoming. The driver is a quiet guy, unlike most drivers who, on a dollar trip, are happy to tell you the story of their life. The only thing he asked was where to. Essex Street was my only answer. Before going home, I have to return Greta's camera. I disappeared saying I'd get it back to her in a few days. It's been more than a week. The cab turns down Essex Street. Here we are. The trip costs me two bucks. A dollar fifty fare plus a fifty cent surcharge for the night rate. Night rate. I hate cab drivers. Good. Greta's place is still open. A sip of whiskey is just what I need to cap off today.